Now, there are a few key issues to learn and keep in your heart regarding the rapture of the church. From this scripture, A. The Lord notices the person whom he addresses as friend and yet this friend unfortunately is not in a wedding gown. This friend, if you remember, is comparable to the five foolish virgins who, like everybody else in the beginning had received the salvation of the Lord as a gift from Jehovah God, and had the love of Jehovah God when they got saved but refused to take oil Holy Spirit with them. Considering that the oil Holy Spirit is a free gift from Jehovah God upon receiving salvation of the Lord Jesus, which gift is so badly needed to sustain the light of the candle faith in their salvation then refusing to pursue the Holy Spirit, amounts to disobedience to Jehovah God. And however friendly you may be to him, he will reject you. Mark this. The five foolish virgins without oil came back with fake oil, when the bridegroom the Lord Jesus had arrived for the wedding rapture. In Matthew chapter 25 verse 12 the Holy Bible says. But he replied, I tell you the truth, I don't know you. So it becomes very obvious, that this friend is the today's church which by all means and standard has refused to receive the Holy Spirit and make him central, consequently lacking in holiness, a requirement the Lord is not willing to waver. B that actually the church for whom the wedding was prepared missed the rapture because she refused to receive the message of repentance and holiness from the servants of the Lord. C. That it is very critical to have the glorious wedding gown ready, the gown without which no one will see the Lord. The wearing of the glorious wedding gown that the church ought to be preparing by this time is a basic requirement for anyone to appear before the Lord. This requirement cuts across the entire scripture in the Holy Bible, which is very busy talking about the holy nature of Jehovah God and how the church can prepare in holiness to encounter the Lord. For instance, when Joshua had to appear before the angel of the Lord the Lord Jesus he had to have his filthy clothes removed uncircumcised heart and wear a rich garment the wedding gown. In the same way Bartimaeus, the blind man took off his filthy clothes and threw them away when Jesus called him, thereby receiving the physical healing of his eyes and the healing of his spiritual eyes through the glorious gown Mark 10. 46 to 52. This is the same rich garment the wedding gown one finds in the book of Luke chapter 15, when the prodigal son was able to repent and the Lord placed a glorious ring in his hand, and ordered a wealthy gown to be placed on him, before the banquet the wedding supper of the Lamb. It is obvious that from Joshua to the prodigal son, to the book of Revelation chapter 19, this glorious wedding gown has to be given by the Lord to those who qualify and are invited for the wedding supper of the Lamb. Surely by now, it becomes very clear to the church that it is He, the Lord God that prepares a tailor-made wedding gown for the Bride of Christ, and it is He, the Lord God, that puts the wedding gown on the Bride of Christ who qualifies for the wedding supper of the Lamb. In this process, the Lord God sends the mighty Holy Spirit to dress the Bride of Christ with the righteousness and the holiness of the Lord, through the blood of Jesus. The process of tailoring this glorious gown for the Bride of Christ, is a long, and tortuous one, found in the book of Isaiah chapter 53. A process characterized with a lot of pain rejection and the tearing of sinful flesh to release the glorious blood of Jesus, that washes the heart of the church. It is however, the obligation of the church, to keep this gown clean and holy, even as Joshua was being instructed by the angel of the Lord Jesus in Zechariah chapter 3, verse 7, that, if you will walk in my ways and keep my requirements, then you will govern my house and have charge of my courts.
and I will give you a place among these standing here. In other words, this conversation in the book of Zechariah chapter 3 was actually being directed to the church on how the Lord Jesus paid a horrendous price to get the glorious gown Taylor made for her and now it is her obligation to keep the gown spotless without blemish. It is interesting that the only way through which the church can keep this precious, glorious gown spotless is by walking in the holy ways of the Lord and keeping the requirements of Jehovah God. Ironically, it is practically impossible for the church in today's world to live in the holy requirements of the Lord without Darcy being the Holy Spirit. This explains why the five foolish virgins whose lamps had no oil failed to make it into the rapture. The conversation between the angel of the Lord and Joshua in the book of Zechariah is actually the Lord Jesus telling the church that when she qualifies for the rapture, by keeping the hard-worn wedding gown spotless, she gets an automatic right to rule with him for a thousand years. The Millennium When He Returns On The Day Of The Lord There has always been a constant reminder of the nature of this miraculous glorious gown, within the scriptures of the Holy Bible. For instance, in the book of Isaiah chapter 61, verse 10, this glorious gown when worn, has the limitless, enormous capacity to bring salvation and joy unspeakable to the church and righteousness thereby converting the church into a jewel before the Lord. This glorious gown is therefore extremely crucial. In preparing the church for the rapture, even as seen in the book of Revelation chapter 19, verses 7 through 8, when the Lord says, For the wedding of the Lamb has come, and his bride has made herself ready. Eight fine linen, bright and clean was given her to her. This scripture describes the glorious gown as being fine linen, bright and clean, which represents the holiness and righteousness of the Lord within which the saints are supposed to walk their hearts, in order to qualify for the rapture. It is extremely disturbing to know that, the character of today's church, matches the friend that had no wedding gown and was thrown out without mercy by Jehovah God. This is because she has indulged herself in the promiscuous gospel of prosperity, which is sweet to the flesh, yet, seriously lacking in repentance and holiness. Has she been given the chance of dialoguing with Jehovah? Of course yes. But the tragedy is that when the Lord sends his prophets to tell her to repent, and prepare the way for the rapture, she often mistreats and kills them. What is most disturbing, however, about this scripture, is the fact that when the Lord Jesus said in the book of Matthew chapter 22 verse 8, The wedding banquet is ready, but those I invited did not deserve. He actually meant the church because the rapture is prepared as a wedding banquet between the Lord Jesus and church, and yet we see very clearly that the church failed to make it into the rapture. Moreover, this scripture clearly states that the servants were sent to get other people who were ready, and these other people made it into the rapture. This is absolutely worrying. Because every scripture in the Holy Bible will be fulfilled, and it makes one wonder if today's church will make it into the rapture, because she has rejected the servants of the Lord prophets sent to invite her into the wedding rapture. The Lord Jesus concluded by saying that those who were collected from the streets to attend the wedding banquet had wedding gowns on holiness and righteousness thereby implying that some people who may not be in the conventional churches today and are busy praying in their prayer closets the so-called unheard voices and yet in the eyes of jehovah god they are beautiful rapture material and actually rapture ready most of these people are usually unpopular in their behavior and choices of things, and do not fit well in conventionally manned established churches and structures. 
they choose holiness without compromise, thereby being branded and catalogued extremists, hardliners and at times called unrealistic fanatical Christian who try to achieve out of this earth levels of holiness. Their prayer burden is to see the kingdom of God established, hence materially, they are normally poor and yet they don't even pray for material possession and wealth. This position they often acquire through the help of the Holy Spirit who reveals to them the scripture in Matthew chapter 19 verse 24 in which the Lord Jesus says, It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. The today's church tend to throw this type of people out because they speak correction to the church demanding repentance on defilement, and they exhibit strange behavior. For example wearing a sackcloth and putting ash on their faces while fasting, in today's modern world, and repenting over the rampant sexual sin in the church. This separation from mainstream and man-established churches is the work of the Holy Spirit who actually sets them apart from defilement, so they can be the glorious rapture-ready bride of Christ. In heaven, they are treasured by Jehovah God because without them Christ would have had no perfect bride at all. Going by the current, modern, Today's church which has homosexual pastors and bishops ministering at the altar of the Lord, rampant sexual sin within the congregation and at the altar 1 Corinthians 6, 12 verse 20. Lusting for money, false prophecies, lies and deception, which deception is actually the sin of the Antichrist, when he comes to light in the earth, their penalty is always death Acts 5. 1 to 11, Benanea and Sapphire. Today's church has also seen episodes of pastors going to witch doctors to get charms for attracting the wealthy congregation that can sow hefty seed. However, the glorious rapture ready Christians are often sad people in the external outlook, the people whose appearance may often be disfigured and unappealing to the world, especially during fasting. And if they are ladies their dressing may be unusually long even at their workplaces. Their being disfigured and unattractive to the world make these rapture-ready Christians, Christ-like in character because the glorious bride of Christ is surely Christ-like. The same scenario is also seen when a donkey, which is one of the most despised animals on earth, was mightily used to carry the glory of the Lord through the eastern gate into Jerusalem Mark 11, 1-11. Considering that the donkey is not the most attractive animal to man, and often man compares it with a horse whose value is very high and loved by the world for its beauty, then the Lord must have spoken a very major statement and prophecy to the church through his choice of this often abused animal. The donkey is usually quiet, down-looking, burden-bearing and looked down upon. In other words, just like the donkey, chosen by the Lord, the carriers of the Lord's glory are all the time not attractive to man and the world. And the prophecy of the donkey ushering in the triumphal entry of the Lord into Jerusalem, will be fulfilled when the raptured saints in their glorious wedding gowns return with Lord during the second coming of the Lord. On this day, they will line up on both sides from the Mount of Olives towards the eastern gate of Jerusalem shouting Hosanna to the highest as they usher in the King of Glory, glorious gown and wilderness. It is amazing to see the similarity between the despised donkey chosen by the Lord and the non-attractive, despised saints who make it into the rapture. In the same way when John the Baptist appeared, he was most unattractive, wearing camel hair and a leather belt, roaming the wilderness eating locusts and wild honey and preaching an unattractive gospel of repentance and holiness, but he ushered in, like the donkey the King of Glory. The deep message that the Lord left us in this regard, was the fact that whoever is to make it into the rapture, must be rejected by the church and be outside church. 
when Jesus was rejected by the temple in Jerusalem. He was crucified and resurrected and came and passed outside the temple towards the Mount of Olives. Then he was raptured. This is a very deep message the church cannot afford to ignore. It is absolutely clear that the Lord was saying that for anyone to make it into the rapture they must wear mortal bodies his resurrection that one can only get when rejected by church and hence operating outside the church. Hence, it is not surprising that John the Baptist who came as the raptured spirit of Elijah operated completely outside the church despite his father being a priest bishop. Prophet Elijah himself was raptured because he operated outside the church in the caves and ravines. This makes one definitely want to know the life of Enoch who too was raptured into heaven. It is now interesting to realize that the killing of the flesh which is a prerequisite for anyone to be raptured can only occur outside the man-made institution of church, because it is only outside church that there is the wilderness of repentance and holiness. This is the fulfillment of the book of Leviticus chapter 23 verse 25, when Jehovah said, 25 do no regular work but present offering made to the Lord by fire. This means that preparing for the rapture is where the church norm isn't. It is not surprising that the carrier of the Lord's glory into Jerusalem, the donkey, is outside and not in pens. It is common to find donkeys outside at night after they have been used for heavy duty this is unlike the beautiful horse which have been kept in pens and carefully watched over by veterinary doctors and well federal indoors. This same likeness of Christ that is not attractive to the world and yet brings glory to the Lord God, and which the church is commanded to acquire, is still seen in Isaiah chapter 52 verse 14 and Isaiah chapter 53 verses 2 and 3. The selflessness that goes with the wearing of the Lord's glorious wedding gown is astounding. In this regard, it is not uncommon for these rapture-prepared saints, who are not mainstream in the church, to even quit jobs that predispose them to sexual sin and other sins but inside their hearts. They long to see the Lord Jesus glorified in complete holiness that he deserves. These unrecognized Christians are usually fewer than the majority and popular modern churches of today. And their appearance in the book of Matthew chapter 7, verse 13, fulfills the scripture that the Lord Jesus gave, when he said that the path leading to the kingdom of God is a very narrow and unpopular path that is hidden and one has to search for it to locate it and follow it, while the path leading to hell is wide with a lot of fun, pleasure and much lights some of which look like disco lights and majority of the people are walking there. Therefore, the church is hereby warned to find her rightful wedding gown and watch out that this glorious wedding gown is actually the righteous heart of the saints. Bitter Rejection and Rapture Christ Jesus was rejected by the world and there is no way the Lord Jesus would love to come for and when the current prostitute church in her present filthy and unfaithful state. The state that has constantly attracted a very defiling acceptance from the world, whereas Jesus was himself rejected by the world. Apparently, this bitter rejection of the Lord Jesus by the world is a mirror image which the church should have emulated if she is to be Christ-like. The Holy Bible has heavily dwelt on this rejection of Christ by the world. In this context, the book of 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 4 and 5 is a classic on this matter of rejection, and says, As you come to him, the living stone rejected by men but chosen by God and precious to him, you also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Men in this scripture represent the church, i.e. the flesh and blood which is the miniature version of the world in us. 
it is absolutely pathetic that the church has an inherent nature of flesh and blood that rejects Jesus. The situation well put in the book of Genesis chapter 8 verse 21 describes every fiber of man as being naturally inclined to evil from childhood. This is the world in us that rejects Jesus thereby technically disqualifying us from being part of the rapture without notice. The global version of this is the outside world that also fights Christ to another level and magnitude often manifested in movies like the A. Vinci Code, blasphemous comedies, movies, magazines, websites, hostile corporate world, governments, other mass movements and religions. In all these cases, overcoming the world will most definitely always require the help of the transforming power of the Holy Spirit. This allows the Christian church to put on the rapture prerequisite imperishable immortality wedding gown. From the above, the message of the cross therefore, still remains foolishness to the perishing, and the power of Jehovah God to those destined for the rapture. 1 Corinthians 1:18. How then, can this church embrace other gospels like the gospel of prosperity? gospel of sow a seed and get your miracle now. This problem has been confounded by deliberate alienation of repentance which should otherwise have been the center of the Christian message. Little has the current church known that rejecting repentance and holiness essentially means rejecting the blood of Jesus and therefore, plunging her into the raging fire that will consume the enemies of God. Hebrews 10 26 to 31. In order to make it into the rapture, one must be bitterly rejected by the world. Isaiah 53 verse 3, Isaiah 52, 13 to 15, Matthew 2 verse 18, Jeremiah 31 verse 15, John 1 verse 11. Is the church prepared for rapture? During the rapture, flesh and blood will not inherit the kingdom of God. Thence, the mortality will have to be replaced with immortality while the perishable with imperishable 1 Corinthians 15, 50-53. In this case, it becomes very important to realize that the spirit and the flesh are always in constant conflict with one another Galatians 5, 16-18 within the Christian. Subsequently, this results into a situation in which when one nurtures and cherishes the flesh, then their spiritual lives are overruled by the sinful desires of the flesh. The result of the above contest spirit versus the flesh ultimately leads to the church Christian living in perpetual cycles of perennial sin which eventually becomes very difficult to break out of. The fact that the simple desires of the flesh are always driven by the menacing spirit of addiction and keeps them away from living in holiness, makes it worse for the church. On the contrary, a stronger spiritual life signifies a weaker flesh, thereby overruling the simple desires of the heart and making Christians desire everything that pleases the Lord Jesus in complete holiness and righteousness. This the true identity marker of the Bride of Christ who will qualify for the rapture Ephesians 4, 12-15. In this respect, the stronger spiritual life will always lead the Christian into the things of the Holy Spirit, thereby encouraging fasting which essentially crucifies the flesh. The Christians then grow from one level of holiness to the next till they are completely consumed by the Holy Spirit and become the mature. Perfect Bride of Christ Ezekiel 47 verse 1 to 6. At this juncture, it is important to know that a perfect bride is a mature Christian that can resist the devil and stage a fight till the adversary flees. James 4, 7 to 8. Furthermore, given the holy nature of the Lord God, certainly no man will see the Lord Jesus or inherit the kingdom of God without holiness. Hebrews 12 verse 14. This definitely implies that a mature bride of Christ Christian will have repented and received the Holy Spirit and chosen holiness at the expense of self. Now, 
when such a Christian living in holiness dies, then the perishable mortal body made out of dust returns to dust. Genesis 2 verse 7, Genesis 3 verse 19, Psalms 103 verse 14. Ecclesiastes 3 verse 20 While the breath of God that gave him his spirit qualifies for an immortal body and is raised up during the rapture to catch up with the Lord Jesus in the air. This practically disarms death and brings to completion the plan of God into the life of a Christian by accomplishing the true meaning of the salvation of the Lord Jesus Christ into the church. Genesis 3 verse 15, Colossians 2, 13 to 15, 1 Corinthians 15, 54 to 58, Galatians 3, 13 to 14. Therefore, it is absolutely clear that, a minimum and very small percentage of those who confessed to be Christians and died will make it into the rapture because to their dismay, the failure of the majority of Christians to strive for absolute holy living, will put many to shame. Clearly, the way the Christians are currently living in complete lack of holiness and in total compromise with sin inside the church, and by accommodating wickedness at the expense of holiness, by the time they fall asleep, they often have fallen short of the holiness requirement of the Lord. It is unfortunate that the church has not taught the true doctrine of the blood of Jesus, repentance and holiness and how to receive the Holy Spirit. Even more disappointing is that the church has focused on prosperity teachings, the gospel of miracles and read only scriptures that are sweet and itching to their flesh making the Christians stunted in growth and infants forever. The result has been wide-scale sexual sin in church and rampant idolatry of money, together with other sins like lying, taking root in the church. The situation is no different between the altar servants of the Lord and the congregation. False prophets have entered the church and confused her by making it difficult to know which voice is coming from the Lord and which one isn't. With five wise virgins having lamps burning under the Holy Spirit and five foolish virgins having the lamps burning without the Holy Spirit at one point, all the ten lamps are burning. It becomes very difficult to discern which light is genuine and coming from the Holy Spirit a situation that has reigned in church for some time now. No wonder perverted worship has taken center stage at the altar of the Lord, making one question whether the God of Elijah, he still lives. The failure of the church to teach on the importance of the mighty Holy Spirit during their walk with Christ accounts for this. Scriptures like Hebrews chapter 6 verses 4 through 6 Chapter 10 verses 26 through 31 and 2 Peter chapter 2 from verse 19 through 22 are hardly read to the young Christian as they receive the Lord Jesus. In which case, misleading them to think that they can recycle between sin, the world and the church. Yet the emphasis should have been on zero tolerance to sin and holy living. This has created a calamity within the Christian faith and only a repentance and holiness revival, where repentance means confessing your sins and turning away from sin, can save this church in the last days. The tragedy though, is that rapture is around the corner and the signs of the end of age are already in place. See sections below on earthquakes, wars, droughts, pestilence floods etc. leaving the church with very little time to restore this massive and wide-scale defilement she has gotten herself into the dark of the new covenant and the glorious church in the throne room of the Lord God in heaven. The Ark of the New Covenant is the most important centerpiece of the throne. On either side of the Ark of the New Covenant of the Lord are the cherubim of glory. The Ark of the New Covenant of the Lord God is the throne and he is enthroned between the two cherubim. Matthew 19 verse 28, 1 Samuel 4 verse 4, 2 Samuel 6, to 2 Kings 19 verse 15, 
1 Chronicles 13 verse 6, Psalms 2 verse 4, Psalms 80, verse 1, Psalms 99 verse 1. The Throne Room Vision In the year 2003, when the Lord God called Dr. Zohar in a mighty visitation, he took him into the throne room of the Lord God in heaven and showed him the Ark of the New Covenant of the Lord and the two cherubim of glory on either side. After this, the Lord God started giving Dr. Zohar new revelation on the Ark of God and how it relates to the rapture of the church. See page 28 Prophetic Calling While at the throne room, the glory of the Lord came and sat on the mercy seat of the Ark of the New Covenant of the Lord. Then immediately, so much glory covered the inside of the Ark of the New Covenant of the Lord and lightning stroke the Bible that was seated in there three times, thereby causing a quake. It is important to realize that in so doing the Lord God essentially gave a very deep revelation on the end time church and the rapture. What was amazing was that when the Holy Bible was finally placed inside the Ark of the New Covenant, the cloud of His presence came and sat on the mercy seat, then the entire Ark of the New Covenant became glorious. In this visitation, the Lord God revealed what will happen to the Church in the latter days. The Ark of the New Covenant of the Lord is the Church of Christ and when the Holy Bible is placed at the center inside of the Ark of the New Covenant and the glory of the Lord has sat on the mercy seat, then the entire Ark of the New Covenant becomes very glorious. This implies that the Lord God has decided that the Church of Christ in which the Bible is central takes a center position and the Lord Jesus is enthroned on the mercy seat will be the glorious latter church that qualifies to be taken up in the rapture. The Holy Spirit has always been very critical in the Holy of Holies and helping the church offer acceptable spiritual sacrifices to Jehovah God. Mercy Seat and Spiritual Altar The Atonement Covered Mercy Seat of the Ark of the New Covenant Of the Lord is the Spiritual Altar of the Church of Christ that he himself having removed her from the earthly sanctuary into the spiritual tabernacle now offers spiritual sacrifices acceptable to the Lord God. For that matter, it is on this atonement covered that the precious blood of Jesus is so much poured. And furthermore, the fact that in the vision of the Lord that Dr. Zohar was shown, when the cloud of his glory was enthroned on the mercy seat between the cherubim of glory, then the entire Ark of the New Covenant became very glorious. This implies that the latter Church of Christ will be one in which Christ is fully enthroned thereby bearing an enormous latter glory of the Lord. It is the glory of the Lord visiting the altar today's Church that restores the favor of the Lord over the Church. And when the glory of the Lord comes and seats on the mercy seat spiritual altar then the Lord Jehovah God has been enthroned in your heart. The implication here being that, the perfect unblemish sacrifice placed at the altar by the church essentially enthrones the Lord and restores honor unto his holy name. For this reason, with all the heavenly hosts, heavenly armies and multitudes of angels, the two cherubim of the glory usually still have to stretch out their wings and cover the mercy seat spiritual altar. These actions of the two cherubim of the glory, in constantly covering the mercy seat, presents a major lesson that today's church must learn from. It is pretty obvious that the two cherubim of the glory constantly protect the sight that which the glory of the Lord will touch during the visitation of the Holy Spirit. This raises an inevitable question, how about the church today? Has she jealously protected the altar of the Lord at which the latter glory will fall? Joel 2, 28 32 from sexual sin, lying, love of money, witchcraft etc. Does she even know that this is key to the rapture? The spiritual altar and mercy seat at which the glory of the Lord seats is your heart. That is why in the book of Ezekiel chapter 36, 
verses 24 through 30, he says, the Lord God would replace the hearts of the saints and place his spirit inside their new hearts thereby causing them to follow his decrees and commands. Consequently, it is your heart that needs to be protected from all sin in order that you receive and bear the latter visitation of the Holy Spirit, walk in holiness, and make it into the rapture. The Restoring Blood The Restoring Blood of Jesus, which is poured on the mercy seat spiritual altar therefore, has the complete capacity to restore the defiled altar of the Lord in the Church of Christ today and prepare her for the glorious rapture. The ultimate sacrifice without blemish, that the Church has to present before Jehovah God, in order to experience the much needed latter visitation, which prepares her for the rapture, is the blood of Jesus. This mighty blood of Jesus, in the book of Isaiah chapter 53, presents humility, pain, selflessness, rejection and complete obedience to the word of the Lord. In which case, obedience to the word of the Lord then becomes better than sacrifice. 1 Samuel 15 verse 22. Accordingly, this implies that the latter church, that will be taken up in the rapture, is the obedient church that follows the laws and the decrees and the sacred commands of the Lord God. Nowhere in the scripture is the importance of obedience more stressed as a requirement for the favor of the Lord than in the book of Isaiah chapter 66 verse 2. In this scripture, the Lord God clearly states, Has not my hand made all these things? And so they came into being declares the Lord. This is the one I esteem, he who is humble and contrite in spirit, and trembles at my word. Emerging from the above, the crucial question to today's church becomes, has the church been humble, contrite in spirit and trembled at the word of the Lord? Well, this definitely sounds like a complete departure from the current state of the church today in which sexual sin is rampant, the love of money idolatry is established and there is no rebuking of sin. The present church therefore, has to start lighting up a holy fire before Jehovah God and stop lighting up useless fires before him. Malachi 1, 6-10 In order that the latter glory of the Lord may revisit the altar and prepare herself for the rapture. The Bible at the center of the glorious ark of the new covenant in the throne room of God, is the true bread that comes from heaven, which if a man eats will have eternal life John 6, 49-51. In the latter church which qualifies for the rapture the perfect bride is uniquely and distinctly defined by this precious character. The restoring power of the true bread of life that came from heaven is capable of rebuilding the entire Church of Christ on earth as prophesied in the book of Daniel chapter 2 verses 34 and 35. Christ, the Rock, is the head of the Church who is enthroned over the Church altar for which reason the Rock that hit the statue and demolished it, became a huge mountain that covered the entire earth. This mountain represents the Kingdom of the Lord Jesus, that will consume the earth. Once he has been enthroned as head of the church, it goes without saying that this glorious enthronement of the Lord Jesus over the latter glorious church implies the destruction of all the false kingdoms of man that are currently reigning in today's church thereby robbing the Lord of his glory. The good news however, is that the latter glory coming to visit the church is greater than the former Joel 2, 28 28-32. 1 Peter 1 verse 11, 2 Corinthians 3 colon 9, John 2 colon 3, Matthew 9 17, John 14 12 in which case holiness will reign in the latter church and the healing power of Christ will sweep through the house of the Lord in this end time revival. Rapture and the Second Coming of the Lord While the rapture is the day the Lord comes for his glorious church, the second coming of the Lord, also known as the day of the Lord, 
is actually the day of judgment at the eastern gate of Jerusalem. During the second coming of the Lord, the Lord Jesus returns with the raptured saints and immediately his feet stand on the Mount of Olives. The mountains splits forming great valleys, creating great distress. It is important to know that the day of the Lord will have no sunlight, daytime or night time. When the Lord Jesus comes back to rule over the whole earth, together with the raptured saints, Satan will be bound for a thousand years. This sharply contrasts with the day of the rapture when Christ comes to meet his glorious bride Holy Church in the clouds. Within the prophetic timeline both these events that are of greater significance to the Church, describe the climax of end time. The Church can in no way claim ignorance of the occurrence on the timing of these landmark events given that the Holy Bible talks at greater length about these signs that would precede the second coming of the Lord. The prophet Joel spoke about the wonders that would take place in heaven and on earth as the Church progresses towards the day of the Lord. These signs encompass massive earthquakes, foods, asteroids coming close to the earth volcanic eruptions, events around and about the moon, and the massive outpouring of the Spirit of the Lord Joel 2, 22-32. The same Spirit of the Lord, further led the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to lead to his church on the signs of the end of age. In this conversation, the Lord predicted wars between nations and kingdoms, great earthquakes, famines, pestilences, fearful events and great signs from the heavens. This, in his own words would mark the end of age. Luke 21, 5-38, Matthew 24. It is extremely surprising and perplexing that the church has not only lived in sinful ignorance in the past but has continued to dwell in utter insensitivity to the Holy Spirit and the signs of the end of age. Evidently, the end of age started in 1948 with the formation of the State of Israel, a key spiritual event that the Church has downplayed and totally ignored and yet this sparked off the beginning of the greatest fulfillment in our time. When the Lord Jesus was referring to the fig tree, he essentially meant the restoration of the nation of Israel and their subsequent gathering from the four corners of the earth where the Jews had been scattered in the diaspora Luke 21. The fig tree's leaves would begin to sprout a sign that the summer would have drawn near, signaling that the kingdom of God is around the corner. The sequence of events relating to the rapture and the second coming of the Lord will occur in the following order. A. The restoration of the state of Israel. B. The beginning of birth pains. C. The rapture of the church. D. The first half of tribulation. E. The second half of tribulation, F. The second coming of the Lord, G. The millennium rule, etc. H. Other events towards the new heaven and the new earth. See chart on page 43.